Hello and welcome to this video demonstration. My name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Today I'm going to talk about making comparison word clouds in R. Before we get to my example, I wanted to show two sites that really helped me understand how these work. So the first is the mining Twitter with R website that I have up here. Um, in this example, they, of course, mine Twitter for tweets mentioning AT&T, Verizon, um, T-Mobile, and Metro PCS. And they get the text from those tweets and then compare what people are saying about these four different companies. And so we go through all the text, all of the code, and we'll go through my code later. But here's what a comparison word cloud looks like. So we have our four brands, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Metro PCS. And here are some words that people were using when they were tweeting about these four brands. We'll also go through a commonality cloud, which will show what these things have in common. So in this case, what these four brands had in common, what people were saying about all of them. So they were words like check, help, happy, um, time, and other similar words. Were, were used across all of the different brands that this example used. So this mining Twitter site has been very helpful for me for learning how to mine Twitter, which is an, an excellent tool, and then for these comparison word clouds. I could not have learned it without this site. Another really good one that I also learned how to do comparison word clouds from is this Simply Statistics blog, which again is one of my favorites. And there are actually three biostat professors that run this site. And in their example of the comparison word cloud, they compare the 2011 and 2012 State of the Union address. And so they went and found it online and then they pulled it into R. And then you can see here that they have a comparison word cloud and then they have another a common word frequency cloud, which is the same thing as the commonality cloud. So it brings up some really interesting points here you can see. America, American, people, jobs, they were coming up in both State of the Union addresses. So it's just, it's a really quick snapshot to look at your data with and it can be very useful. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, go ahead and look at the mining Twitter blog and the Simply Statistics blog to get you started. One way that I've taught myself how to do these things is to go through these blogs and first replicate their example. And then when you can replicate their example, try to modify the code to fit whatever you want to do with it. So in this case, we're going to do something a little bit fun that I wouldn't normally do. So we're going to look at song lyrics for the year end number one singles. So we'll do 2012, 92, 72, and 52. So I just Googled and found this Wikipedia site list of Billboard year end number one singles and albums. And so the first year here that we're going to use is 1952, so it's Blue Tango by Leroy Anderson. We're also going to do 1972, and the top song that year was The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face by Roberta Flack. Skipping ahead to 1992, the number one song was End of the Road by Boys to Men. And then in 2012, Somebody That I Used to Know by Gautier. So I just picked this every 20 years so that we would have four songs to compare lyrics for. Once I identified the four songs I wanted to move forward with, I searched on Google a bit more to find their lyrics. And then when I had them, I could start to put them into Excel and then pull them into R. So let's do that. So here you can see I have four different CSV files that I'm going to pull into R. So what I did is in my first cell, my A1 cell, I have text. And that just tells me in this column, it's my text. And then after that in A2, I just pasted all of the lyrics from this song, which is uh, first time ever I saw your face. I just pasted them in there and then saved as a CSV. And I did that for all four songs. So I have text and then I have the song lyrics. Go ahead and do that. Set yourself up with a um, working directory. Mine is on my desktop and a research tip folder. And then I have all of my associated files. Um, so now we can open up R. 
And I've already written this script, so that's the great thing about R. You can save your script and open it up later. So here's everything we need to run this comparison word cloud. So anytime you start with R, you have to load different packages. And so in this case, we're going to use three of them, um, Twitter, word cloud, and text miner. So if you haven't installed these yet, you need to do that before you load them, which is what these three lines of code will do. So I'm just going to right click and run to load these three packages and they load with no trouble. For this next bit, this is actually a clean text function um, that I copied from the mining Twitter uh, website that I just love so much. Um, so I'm using their code. And what this will do is it's going to take away all of the symbols, all of the punctuation, all of the numbers from those song lyrics so that they're just a bunch of words. I'm going to run this and it's going to create that function for me to use later. The function again is called clean text. So now we've done our uh, prerequisite steps. So now we can actually start pulling in that data into R so that we can work with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an object called text1.csv. And what that object is going to be is the lyrics from Blue Tango. So here I have my working directory, and then here's my tango.csv file. And it's all within quotations and parentheses. And then we have the read.csv function. And then we're going to read it in as vector which I'm not sure exactly what it does, but I do know that I cannot get this code to run without this extra little line. So these two lines, run them together, will import the Blue Tango song lyrics for you. So I'm going to highlight those two, run it, and it imports no problem. This third line here will actually start this clean text function. And what it's going to do, it's going to clean that text1.csv that I created right here. So whatever object you make right here should be what you're cleaning right here. So the clean version of this will be saved in a new object, which we're going to call Tango Clean. Um, so highlight this line, right click to run, and now we've cleaned those lyrics. We're gonna do the same thing with our second song. Uh, first time ever I saw your face. So again, I have my working directory and my file name here in parentheses, in quotations. We have our read CSV function. We have um, text2.csv object that we're creating. And then again, we make this new object. And then we're going to clean that new object and store it into first underscore clean. So these three lines together will import my data and clean those lyrics up for me. And we can see that ran with no trouble. So we're just going to do the same thing to our third song. Just import the data, create a new object and as a factor, and then we're going to clean up that text. And then again, same with the fourth. So I'm just going to run these six lines of code all together. And of course, these hash marks, they're just comments. So R will ignore them and run right over it. There are several different ways to import your data and clean your data. This is just one way that I tend to use. So I had some code laying around that I could just quickly change to fit this situation. If you find another way and you're happy with it, please do that. You, there's no reason you have to copy someone else's code 100% of the time. If it works for you, then it works for you. And I also have a tendency to use hashtags very liberally so that I can kind of see the different sections of my R code. So here you can see there's kind of a section here that's within two very long lines of hashtags. This is all of my importing data. Um, and then I move on and this is where I'm going to take all of that data and put it into one object. So here that's what this is doing. It's collapsing all of these and then it's going to combine them all into an object called all. So let's go ahead and do that. Just highlight these five lines of code, right click, and then run liner selection. So now we have all of our song lyrics in one object called all. So moving right along to our next little subsection, we can see we're going to remove stop words. So earlier we cleaned 
the text, so we removed any numbers, any symbols, those kinds of things, but we didn't take out common words. So there are some words that will be common across these songs that won't be very meaningful. So the, and, or, those aren't going to be um, particularly informative, so we can actually take them out of the word cloud so that they won't be used. This is this list is really easy to change. All you have to do, I could just add a comma right here with parentheses and put a new word here. So I could actually put, you know, word just like that, which I don't want to add right now. So I'm just going to delete and run with these three words. I'm going to take the and and or out of all of my lyrics. So highlight these two lines of code and that will take those out. And again, it ran with no problems. So you don't really have any output yet. It's a lot of prepping to get there, but we're, we're getting close. The next thing we need to do, we're going to take our object called all that has all of our lyrics in it, and we're going to turn it into a corpus. And then we're going to turn it into a term document matrix, convert as matrix, which honestly, I don't know as much about these lines of code. I know that they're necessary when you're working with text, but you'll have to go uh, do some searching on the web to get a more detailed explanation of what these lines do. So I'm going to go ahead and run them. And I, I think it just kind of moves them around to be in the correct format that it needs to make this um, these word clouds. So here we can actually add column names. So we're kind of charting four different songs against each other. So we can have titles on each quadrant that we have. So one will be titled Tango. And of course, that's the song Blue Tango. First time for first time ever I saw your face. Road for end of the road and somebody for somebody I used to know. So we're going to go ahead and add these titles so that we'll know which words are associated uh, with which song. And then we move down and we're actually ready to start making the comparison cloud. So here you can see function comparison cloud on our term document matrix. So again, whatever is the last object you created up here, TDM, is what should be right here. So whatever the last object was. So we added column names to TDM and now we're going to create a comparison cloud from TDM. And you can change the colors, you can change the size of the titles so if you want it to be larger or smaller, and you can set the maximum number of words so you can change this to any number. We're going to go ahead and keep this as it is now, but you can definitely change those if that's what you want to do. I'm going to highlight these three lines of code and then run it. And here you can see that it is building our word cloud. So to get a better look at this, here in the top left we have first time, so these are the first time lyrics. End of the road lyrics in the bottom left, bottom right, somebody I used to know, and top right, um, the blue tango. So you can see all of the different words. So blue tango, of course tango, blue, forget, express, they use these kinds of words. First time, moon, eyes, endless, captive, time, end of the road, a natural, of course, road, forever, pain, those kinds of words. And then somebody I used to know, friends, change, ache, sadness, those kinds of words. So here we actually see the lyrics for these four songs plotted against each other, which can be really interesting if you are comparing across text. So the last thing I wanted to show is a commonality cloud. So this will show what these four songs have in common. And again, it's from, um, one song is from 1952, one is from 1972, one is from 1992, and then one from 2012. So what stays the same over all of this time? What, what do these songs have in common? What are they all talking about? So here we're going to run the function commonality cloud on our term, term document matrix again. Um, we can change our colors if we want to, and we can change the size of the title if we want, which we're not going to mess with anything. We're just going to run it as is. And here's our commonality cloud. 
there's one word that is in all of these lyrics and that is love. So it seems like a lot of songs today are about love and relationships. Well, it's been true since the 1950s. They've all been around this theme of love, at least the four songs that we chose. So I just walked you through a code to pull in some text data, to clean that text data, remove some stop words, and then to create two different kinds of word clouds. Hopefully this will be interesting and, and people will use it for their poster presentations, class presentations, um, those kinds of things. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Well, that about does it for this video demonstration. Again, my name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Um, you can visit us at our webpage. The address is www.coi.unt.edu slash IRA lab. On our webpage, you can find out more about us. You can see our hours, schedule an appointment to come talk to me about your research. Um, we have a couple of these demonstration videos on here under how to, as well as a whole host of both qualitative and quantitative research resources. So feel free to take advantage of that. And thanks again.